Chili Effect is sponsored by WallStreetWindow.com and listeners like you. And now, and now the, most, the most underrated voice in all, in all media, Chuck O'Shelly. March 6, 2024, allegedly according to that thing we call a calendar, and this is the O'Shelly Effect. So, welcome to it. Here we are, Woden's Day, and of course, I was supposed to have Larry Hancock on with me tonight, but Larry is a little under the weather Instead, I'll be doing some other things, and uh, it's funny lately. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday shows are giving me the trouble with scheduling now. It's funny because Monday used to, and I got rid of Monday, and now uh, Tuesday gives me the trouble. I, 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 I love it. Anyhow, there have been recordings. There have been behind-the-scenes workings being uh, performed, etc., so still getting work done, okay? Anyhow, what do I have for you tonight? Well, because it was the unscheduled, why not just pull together what I routinely drag myself through and drag you through it, too? A little bit of news, a little bit of this and that. What am I reading and why? Well, it's not all necessarily stuff that has been published in the past day and a half or so. But over the past two weeks, and I didn't complete my news show last week, but over the past two weeks, what's been on my mind? What am I reading? Why? Uh, I dropped a couple of links in the live chat room at Ocelli.com and in the next few days because I was asked to delay removing the zip files from my Google Drive uh, just for a couple of days. I'm going to have to put out the new zip files uh, for those of you who are signed up for the archives. But anyway, a lot of things have been going on behind the scenes, including uh, a new thing for transcripts for the shows, etc. So anyway... A lot of stuff going on. Do I want to talk about that? No. Let's take a look at the rather depressing world around us, <laughs> right? Continue on with the idea of what's actually happening. What in the hell is going on out there? You know, I, I loved it when they did those documentaries, what in the world are they spraying, et cetera. And by the way, I was thinking of uh, maybe opening up all of the Ocelli Effect shows from now on, the live shows, to phone calls. So... Give me some sort of feedback on that. Let me know if you guys would like it very much, if that's what you want to do. If you want to be able to call in during all shows, uh, of course, I would leave it up to the guest if they want to field phone calls, etc. cetera. But, um, yeah, I think that's something that we should look into doing. So, anyway, all of that having been uh, uh, put in play, all of the stuff going on behind the scenes, a couple of new pages built, a couple of new features, uh Apparently, there's some sort of fan club feature or something that we're going to start up on Spreaker. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, but I don't want to discuss it. It's not really the fun part of this. Uh, I love interacting with you guys. I love some of the emails, some of the other stuff that's come up recently, some of the contacts I've gotten, some of the weird videos. Thank you so much for disturbing ass videos, actually, uh, from a few people and uh, suggestions as to what topics need to be covered. So what I'm going to do here is, in an uncharacteristic fashion, take a quick break. And I'm going to continue on with the live show here on a Wednesday. And uh, I, I just, it was five after I had to get live on the air. But uh, we got a lot more to cover, and I'm going to try and blow through it in top speed over the course of the next hour on the Ocelli Effect. Stick around. WallStreetWindow.com Wall Gold Silver The Stock Market WallStreetWindow.com Perhaps you're invested deeply. Perhaps you're not in deep enough. Maybe you're thinking about getting started. WallStreetWindow.com Michael Swanson, the brilliant author of The War State understood these trends professionally for many years, and now he gives you the benefit of his knowledge. WallStreetWindow.com Go there now. Go there now. Go there now. Ocelli.com
are with the second segment of the Ocelli Effect. Quick interruption and uh, intersection of the show. I had a little little tightness in the throat and chest there for a second, so I needed to take that break uh, just to catch catch myself. Not sure what's going on there, but what the hell? Like the rest of the world, let's figure it out together, right? Anyway, let's begin with uh, something that I am currently calling, uh, well, let's see, the TikTok tech teaser, if you will. Uh, I got news that uh, NVIDIA is uh, definitely uh, a stock to watch and all that good stuff. Now, NVIDIA is one of those, you know, processing tech uh, companies out there, and uh, they're heavily into the AI stuff. And AI is making a lot of interesting news that's not necessarily banner headline, but here we go. There's a brand new AI of some sort, which is supposed to be super advanced, almost human, almost human. They keep screaming it. I think we're still a few generations away from uh, a Cyberdyne and uh, the, the, the takeover of, <laughs> you know, uh, the takeover of the Pentagon, etc. But anyway, when we take a good look over at um, the Insider, what do we have? A headline, spam, scams, and propaganda. The state of Twitter 15 months into Elon Musk's reign. Funny to see anybody who's not, you know, 100% the biggest part of the corporate media. Uh, I mean, all those people are opposed to Elon Musk because he's just in bad taste, you know. And, oh, he's just kind of a jerk. But we're also going to have him host Saturday Night Live. So, you know, he's in the club, but we don't like it when he's there, except that we do like it when he's there because we, we have the ability to talk about him. So he's an object of interest. He's a shiny object to keep you busy, and he moves billions of credits around. And I do mean credits because it's not real money, but the billions and billions that he spends for a platform on the Internet, etc., which could disappear in a moment and not even necessarily have any physical assets connected to it, no problem there. Anyway, how Musk turned to conspiracy theories. Oh, God, this is in that article. By the end of 2021, Elon Musk was increasingly adamant that free speech was <laughs> in retreat around the world. <laughs> the corporate, according the culprit, excuse me, according to the billionaire, was the woke mind virus. That's in quotes. Okay, so I'm not going to bother with this article because... Even though this is not one of the biggest mainstream platforms available, the insider dot, let's see, dot uh, ru dot uh, slash en. Yeah, all right, whatever. You know what? Doesn't matter. They're going to take the same tact that the mainstream media has taken. Oh, look, he's a conspiracy theorist. No, he's an opportunist. And in fact, you know, he's not some uh, anti government Superman of any kind. He's completely funded by. The U.S. government, tax write-offs, all that good stuff. And, you know, those of you that hate the electric vehicles, don't forget, that's your guy. But that's not really his business. His business is manipulation of the credit system. And, no, he's not a self-made billionaire. And isn't it amazing how he's right there at the right time to purchase the right kind of technology, to be in the position that the government is going to absolutely lay, lay a path forward for, right? It's almost like they're taking a machete to the forest to make sure there's a path before him for success, always, no matter how much money he should lose in business, technically speaking. Anyway, how about this one? We'll go to uh, uh, 404media.com. And, and uh, inside the world of TikTok spammers and the AI tools that enable them, uh, do I need to read from this article? No, I don't. I'll tell you what. It's all about how the people are going to use AI now to uh, be the super trolls that they are, to be the influencers that they are. And you should not only be afraid of AI because, after all, Skynet will go online and take over stuff, but they're going to be responsible for empowering all the troll farms. Do you believe that one? Anyway, investment thesis on, uh, again, NVIDIA, which I brought up at the beginning. Time to admit my big mistake. Rating upgrade. Ooh. Uh, I, I noticed a whole bunch of stories suddenly realizing that NVIDIA was going to be a highly valued stock. 
and all that good stuff. And it's all part of the great corporate gain. It's all about really not gaining dollars over dollars and hand over fist, but gaining data over data. Because, you know, as they talked about at Davos, uh, what, 10 years ago, 15 now, data is the new oil. Maybe I don't need to go into this tech stuff. It's not really my area of expertise, but the world is going to be shaped around you based on it. If you are part of the contingent on the planet that is engaged, allegedly, in this thing we call Internet. And if you're hearing my show right now, you have to be because I don't have any more terrestrial people, right? Anyway, let's go to the thing that's definitely going to affect us all one way or another, whether you decide to vote harder or not. How about that 2024 selection, which now we only have about, what, eight more months to get to, and it is going to be a hell of a ride. Nikki Haley officially drops out of 2024 election challenges Trump to win back her supporters. (laughs) Yeah, okay, so this is the part of the show where I say, see, follow my logic. I told you Nikki Haley was done. I told you all of the Republican distractions were done. These people raised money that they're going to be able to keep. They uh, raised their positions and did their job and pretended like there was something other than the plan to reinstall Donald Trump for 2025 when he takes office again. Let's see if that plan is a continuous follow through and let's see if, you know, my predictions continue to be correct. But so far, pretty much on track. And that from the New York Post, that headline I read, by the way. So I don't think I need to tell you uh, the Super Tuesday, uh, you know, situation that went on. And another article from the New York Post, the uh, a nine to zero Supreme Court ruling on Trump shows that democracy isn't partisan, according to the New York Post. Of course, democracy by definition would be partisan, and we don't live in a democracy. But who am I to contradict the New York Post? Oh, right. I'm a free-thinking person. Um, Yeah, the the 9-0 to ruling that basically keeps Trump on balance and, again, predictable? Absolutely. The year of the lawsuit? Not necessary when you've already got the verdict in hand before you have the trial. And I'm telling you now, all of the verdicts are already in hand, no matter what trial you're looking at. So you can enjoy the stage show and you can watch the rest of the one hour TV show where they catch the criminal, whether it's, you know, uh, D.C. uh, Disorder and Law SVU, Special Victims Unit. You're the victim one way or another because they're coming for you. But uh, whether you do that or you believe that there is a possibility in, you know, in solving every problem. Libertarians always drive everything down to, well, take it to a court and they'll sort it out. As if that is not as corrupted as every other over bloated bureaucracy that exists. As if you have a chance to, I don't know, follow something called the constitution, state or federal. Yeah. Okay. As if that system has anything to do with you. (sighs) <sighs> McConnell weighs endorsing Trump, by the way. This is from the AP. It's a stark turnaround after the January 6, 2021 attack. That is an Associated Press headline. Because we do know that McConnell is going to step aside, finally retire, get the hell out of there. I guess he's got enough money. He's not going to be one of the future stars because, after all, if we go to the New Republic... And we read from that headline, meet North Carolina's GOP governor candidate, a Hitler quoting extremist and a black guy. Uh, North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, the leading Republican candidate for governor, thinks quoting Hitler shouldn't be so taboo. Again, according to the New Republic, um, I'm just going with the headlines here, guys. This is not me making them up. This isn't the onion. But why not? When you got people like that, you got Tim Scott who's going to talk better about Trump than Trump. Doesn't it make sense that you just stick with that? And oh, by the way, let's not forget the totally competent and people that know they're a joke so much so that they can't keep a straight face during a press interaction. People who work for the Biden administration. I'm sorry, do you need an example? And I don't mean stuttering Joe as opposed to Stuttering John from the Howard Stern Show. No, forget about Stuttering Joe and uh, 
whether he's sleepy, slow, tired, or chairman of the imaginary communist whatever. I found this interesting. The U.S. State Department, again, because I have a bunch of AP stories here, let's take a look at what happens when an AP reporter actually tries to say something of meaning or maybe makes an excited utterance during a ridiculous presser from the State Department, the U.S. State Department. And this was uh, about a week ago, and uh, let's take a listen. So much leverage over the Israelis, and this is fundamental vision of the president. So you can use all... Okay, there's a lady there asking a very long question, asking about the uh, overall fundamental vision of the president, which, you know, if he's able to watch a, a couple of Bugs Bunny cartoons in a row, I'll be amazed. But forget about him and forget about her question. Pay close attention to what's about to happen here as a, a, a standardized line of idiocy starts to pour out of the mouth of the State Department representative and then a reporter blurts something out that disrupts the whole proceeding. The privilege you, you want, including weapons that you sell to Israel. So one thing I will say about that that people often tend to forget is that Israel, like other countries in the region, is a sovereign country that makes its own decisions. The United States does not dictate to Israel what it must do, just as we don't dictate to any country what it must do. We present what we believe. Are the, we present what. Okay, in case you missed it. All right, he's talking about Israel. We don't dictate to them what they're supposed to do and this and that. And then, of course, we don't dictate to any other country what we're supposed to do. And he could not get through that sentence without stumbling over what he was saying. Now, is that the big thing I'm pointing out? No. But if you weren't listening carefully, you might have missed what the reporter said when he said, the State Department representative said, hey, we don't tell any country what to do. Let's listen again real fast. What it must do. We present what we believe. Are the, we present what the we believe. We don't tell any country what they must do. And we believe in this and that. And the reporter blurts out, unless you invade them. What was the reaction to that? Let's see. Are the <laughs> Good one, Matt. We, we present, no, I mean, come, but, but come on. Yeah, it's, we, we present stand-up hour at the, in the briefing room. We present what we believe are the best proposals to... See, now he identifies it as stand-up hour at the briefing room. No, it's clown show at the circus, which is Washington, D.C., and he's one of the clowns, and so is uh, everybody else in that room. But he can't contain himself. He's laughing. He knows disingenuous when he when he feels it coming out of his uh, lying mouth. <sighs> one more time. This is we don't dictate to any country what it must do. We present what we believe unless are the we present what the we believe are the <laughs> deadpan unless you invade them. He shakes his head. He smiles and he can't contain his laughter. Can you? I don't know. Maybe it's just me again, you know, not not things you need to take notice of at all, right? So back to selection discussions. <laughs> okay. We talked about McConnell. Uh, let's see. Oh, how about this? Uh, he looks lost. Alarm after Trump's mind blanks out repeatedly during a speech. That's on uh, Salon.com. Nobody pays attention to that because... They're not going to kneecap him all that quickly. A little mention of it here and there because he's got a lot of gaps, but nowhere near as much as the uh, lost guy who I don't think they give him enough water either. You notice that Joe Biden is constantly sounding like he doesn't have enough water? I think it's elder abuse to de keep dehydrating the old man. Everything sounds like uh, uh, when he's talking. On top of the fact that he's, you know, clearly not all that there. Know what I'm saying? What about medicines and magic, though? We could get into that. And now there's a little uh, odd campaign going on in, uh, in, in, in various scientific media, which is not, again, a banner headline, but something that you might have missed because they're trying to tell us now that just like I experienced a couple of years ago, psychedelics are not your friends. Hidden trauma, do psychedelics reveal memories or create fake ones? Bigthink.com. <laughs> has that headline will psychedelics save us nah johnhorgon.org 
Anyway, there's a whole bunch of articles out there actually over the past two weeks trying to tell you, uh, look, you know all that good news we were talking about? You know how the Pentagon was looking into psychedelics in order to deal with PTSD, in order to deal with massive uh, depression? Oh, by the way, nobody's talking about how many veterans are killing themselves on a daily basis any longer. But, you know, all of that, even though the Pentagon literally put money into it and usually – they're not supposed to waste money on stuff like this unless there's a purpose behind it. I mean, I'm not saying that the government always puts money behind things that actually serve a useful purpose. But generally speaking, the Pentagon doesn't waste money on stuff like this <laughs> without a purpose. <sighs> How about the story about I brought it up on the Friday show. Speaking of fast food for the brain and junk food for the brain. How about uh, we have a new burger war? I mean, maybe we'll get to that point in Demolition Man where Taco Bell wins the restaurant wars. Why not? Because there's surge pricing at Wendy's already. I tried to talk to BP about it. He was irate because the man loves his fast food. Burger King decided to give away Whoppers in response to Wendy's surge pricing backlash. This according to uh, the USA Today which, by the way, is a newspaper for idiots who care about news. How about the uh, continuing exploration of Tucker Carlson and what RT's article follows through? Hmm? How about the fact that uh, Tucker Carlson compares U.S. to the Roman Empire and RT not entirely thrilled with it? Well, we should just continue on with the year of the lawsuit. Nobody wants to hear my analysis on... Uh, the new media, the independent media, the alt media's new hero, Tucker, do they? Not at all. I'm sure you don't want to hear about Liberty University, but if you go to the AP once again, you'll find that Liberty University will pay $14 million, the largest fine ever levied under the federal Cleary Act. Now, what's going on there? Well, the misreporting of criminal activity in various places, the misrepresentation of it, the overamplification of certain things, especially regarding immigrants, that's going on. But at Liberty University, they didn't want to let their student body know that they might be in danger while they're attending their ridiculous school to get a piece of paper and collect their debt. Because, you know, any university you're going to go to currently, you're definitely not guaranteed a job after graduation. But... You are almost certainly guaranteed some debt unless, you know, you're part of the moneyed class, in which case, you know, you can throw it away there or Vegas or anywhere you want. But, um, yeah, they're being sued because they tried to give people false assurances about exactly how safe it was to live around and on campus at Liberty University to the tune of $14 million. Well... The battle for American society continues on. But what about the wars in other places? Apparently, Americans are less and less in support of war anywhere. That's an interesting trend. But our media has not let its foot off the gas regarding Israel and the alleged war with Hamas. Uh, again, according to the AP, Gaza ceasefire talks failed to achieve a breakthrough with Ramadan just days away, Egypt says. Oh, mass shootings again. There was, uh, what, one in Texas. Uh, the one in California was pretty interesting. And I actually went to the news uh, break app because uh, there was a bunch of stuff going on in California that I needed to get to, including uh, migrant workers falling from a wall and it being called a mass casualty event. Even though I always understood casualties to be deaths and nobody had died at that point. But there were some pretty severe injuries from... Uh, some of these illegal immigrants trying to climb the wall in California just a couple of days ago. And then I see, of course, mass shooting, and that occurred, let's see, what day did that occur? Uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, if we go to the New York Post via the Newsbreak app, let's just read about where it happened and what happened, that uh, multiple shooting incident, and forget about the other alleged mass casualty event where a bunch of migrants fell from the wall and got hurt. Uh, yeah, I know. It sounds like I'm confused, but I'm only confused because they've totally scrambled the terminology. Newspeak is not being handled properly out there, folks. Just saying, do not turn to your regularly scheduled guide on this. 
Four people were killed, and this is from that article. Four killed, multiple injured in California shooting. That's the way they headlined it on Newsbreak. And this is uh, allegedly from the New York Post. Four people were killed and multiple others were injured in a shooting at a residence in King City, California, authorities said on Sunday. The incident took place on Sunday evening following a party at a residential building where three male adults with gunshot wounds were pronounced dead at the scene. And a female adult was transported to a local hospital where she was pronounced dead, authorities said. That is the shortened version of the story. But this is a uh, this is a local, you know, shooting at a party, which, by the way, is a, a thing happening seemingly every every week, every weekend. And this was on a Sunday again, um, all across the country. But for some reason, they decide to pay attention to this one on the same day that they had to point out the, uh, you know, the migrants falling from the wall. But the migrants falling from the wall, I think, was in San Diego. King City's in a different area. But we're going to have to keep pushing this uh, craziness of criminals because after a while we might get to the United Press International point of having to discuss certain parts of America going through what Haiti's going through right now. Haiti declares a state of emergency after thousands escape prison. Let's read from that story for a moment. And this was published on March 4th. The government of Haiti has declared a 72-hour state of emergency following a weekend of violence that included violent gangs attacking two prisons, facilitating the escape of nearly 3,600 inmates. The state of emergency announced Sunday in a statement covers the country's western department, uh, which includes the nation's capital of Port-au-Prince. Curfews that run from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. will also be enforced until at least Wednesday, it said. The announcement comes after armed gangs attacked two of the Hispaniola nation's largest prisons in the capital and uh, Croix de Bouquets, I guess, on Saturday, uh, resulting in deaths and injuries sustained by police. Of the nearly 3,700 inmates incarcerated at the two facilities, an estimated 100 remain behind bars. <laughs> Human rights lawyer Arnel Remy, whose nonprofit organization works in the National Penitentiary, said on X, uh, the government said there has been a security degradation in the capital. That is the result of, quote, increasing violent criminal acts perpetrated by armed gangs, end quote, including kidnappings and murder, violence against women and children, and looting and theft of public property. The violence which began in the Capitol on Thursday is, quote, casing massive population displacements. It says casing, by the way, C-A-S-I-N-G, so I'm not misspeaking. I think they meant to say causing massive population displacements. But anyway, it's in quotes, so it said. Following the attack on the Capitol prison, the police union called on all officers with access to cars and weapons to assist those defending the facility, saying in a statement Saturday that, quote, no one will be spared in the Capitol because there will be 3,000 extra bandits now effective. On Friday, the union had warned that uh, there were multiple shootings in downtown Port-au-Prince, Quote, students and merchants are running in all directions like crazy ants, end quote. It said, while calling on Haiti National Police to dispatch all available officers to regain control of the situation. No stranger to violence, Haiti has been subsumed by it since July of 2021 when its president, Jovenel Moises, Moise, okay, was assassinated at his home. All right, I'm going to pause from the article here. If you don't remember, I did cover the story where there was an assassination in Haiti uh, a few weeks back. And uh, it is what it is, or not a few weeks back, but uh, months, many months back. And I talked about how that was a thing. And I also talked about that's the uh, uncovered, you know, nobody pays attention to it, part of the uh, drug importation chains that are going on. Haiti is one of those places they ignore. It's also a test bed for a lot of things. 
Here's what I'm thinking might occur in the very near future. If there's a few mass releases of prisoners based on happenstance, violence, prison riots, something like that, in the United States, it will definitely have local populations begging, begging for increased law enforcement, etc. Just saying, just saying. Anyway, let's take a look at what happened. I was telling you about the migrants falling from the wall. Uh, let's take a listen to, uh, let's see, CBS 8 San Diego just for a moment and how they covered this incident that went on at the wall and all of the uh, medical personnel and stuff that were called in to assist near the uh, Tijuana River Valley. Casualty incident at our southern border today. At least 10 migrants in the hospital after falling from the border wall. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. And I'm Kirsten Holmes. This a man has been killed. Okay, sorry. Uh, that, that was The man has been killed is uh, actually part of a commercial break that popped in there. Let's see what else we got. Afternoon near the Tuwana River Valley. CBS 8's Rosia De La Fe joins us live in the studio with more on what we're learning about this situation tonight. Hey, Rocio. Yeah, and San Diego Fire and Rescue says some of the migrants suffered broken bones. I spoke with an immigration rights advocate tonight who visits the border frequently, and he says these falls happen on a daily basis. It's absolutely dangerous. Several migrants are in the hospital tonight with various injuries after falling from the border fence near the Tijuana River Valley. We ended up uh, transporting 10 patients, utilizing six ambulances to area trauma centers to be evaluated for uh, multiple types of injuries. San Diego Fire and Rescue responded to the mass casualty event at around 4 this afternoon. Officials said they found some migrants with broken bones. All the patients were, were treated as they could here and then uh, transported. Officials say some of the migrants had children. All of them were kept together and taken to trauma centers throughout the county. We see uh, cases on a daily basis of people that are injured from uh, having fallen or um, burned their hands as they're using the ropes to uh, come down the, the border wall. Pedro Rios is an immigration rights advocate and tells me he was at the border wall before the incident happened. When I was there, I saw about 130 people that entered and I asked uh, how they crossed. They said they crossed by scaling the border wall. Rios believes the weather might have played a role. The rain yet hadn't fallen in the quantity that we've seen uh, throughout the day. And so it's likely that the slipperiness of the border wall uh, led to people falling the way they did. Okay, a again, the repeated use of mass casualty event when you're talking about broken bones and stressing this story at this time when considering everybody seems to be repeating the lines, you know, this happens on a daily basis, uh, mass casualty event, uh, immigrants, children, border wall. These are bullet points that are being assembled, okay? Now, I'm going to leave you to judge who the suspects are here regarding who is assembling this little bit of neuro-linguistic programming that is occurring here, all right? Because I think you can figure it out. I think you're smart enough to figure that one out. But, uh, yeah, a lot of things are being weaponized, and I should go back under the 2024 selection uh, byline for a moment, or sub-headline, excuse me. Anyway, going back to the AP once again, I also take note, because a lot of the pulses of America will start to be taken more and more as we get closer to selection time. How about this? Few Americans want U.S. more involved in current wars in Ukraine and Gaza. Okay, AP-NORC poll finds. All right. Uh, yep. Here we go again. So there's a lot going on, and uh, there's definitely plenty of manipulation happening. The war will play a role along with all these other social constructs, but stay tuned. <laughs> Yep. 
Anyway, back to it. Few Americans, again, the headline from the AP, uh, few Americans want U.S. more involved in current wars in Ukraine and Gaza, AP-NORC poll finds. Let's read a little bit from this one, and it was uh, published on March 6th. Washington AP, as the U.S. navigates involvement in the wars in Ukraine and Gaza, few Americans want the country to take a more active role in solving the world's problems. According to a new poll from the Associated Press Dash, NORC Center for Public Affairs Research. Let's pause from the article for a moment. Who in their right freaking mind thinks that the U.S. is at this point in time involved or more or less, okay, because they don't want more involvement in the world's problem-solving activities. We, we actually solve problems? I mean, yeah? Is this that world policing thing they used to tell us about? Is that that thing that we were supposed to be responsible for? Uh, forget about my commentary. Back to the AP. While an American role... As the world's policeman, oops, didn't even see that they did that and put it in quotes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. World's policeman has become an increasingly contentious partisan issue. A majority of both Democrats and Republicans agree that the U.S. should not get more involved than it currently is in the ongoing conflicts between Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Hamas. The poll shows that four in ten U.S. adults want America to broadly take a, quote, less active, end quote, role in solving global conflicts. Only about one quarter think the U.S. should take a more active role. And about one third say its current role is about right. <laughs> so, OK, so 40 percent say that uh, we should become less active. Right. Uh, one quarter thinks that we should be more active. And 33 percent, 33 and a third percent, about one third, they say. So maybe it is about 33 percent. Say its current role is just right. Sounds to me like the AP is giving you a bit of a disingenuous headline here. Let's take a look at that headline. Few Americans. Few Americans. I don't know if you would categorize few Americans as 40 percent. Because that's the amount that want the U.S. to, uh, you know, few Americans want, well, oh, wait a minute. No, few Americans want more involvement, but that's still 25%. That's one in four. Uh, anyway, AP, what the hell? All right. Let's see what else we can take a look at. Oh, you know, I did that story on the Eagles thing and that uh, piece of paper that the lawsuit was over. Well, that case is over again from the AP. Charges are dropped and uh, are dropped mid-trial in Hotel California Lyrics case. Don Henley plans to fight on. New York AP, from the start, the case was highly unusual. A criminal prosecution centered on the disputed ownership of a cachet of hand-drafted lyrics to Hotel California and other Eagles hits. Its end was even more unexpected. In the middle of trial, New York prosecutors abruptly dropped their case Wednesday against three collectibles experts who had been accused of scheming to hang on to and peddle the pages, which Eagles co-founder Don Henley maintained were stolen private artifacts of the band's creative process. In explaining the stunning turnabout, prosecutors agreed that defense lawyers had essentially been blindsided by getting 6,000 pages of communications involving Henley and his attorneys and associates. The material was provided to both sides only in the past few days after Henley and his lawyers apparently made a late-in-the-game decision to waive their attorney-client privilege to keep legal discussions confidential. Uh, so a really weird situation happened procedurally here where an overwhelming flood of paperwork ended this circumstance. <laughs> and uh, somebody's got a lyric sheet and somehow it's an artifact of the band's creative process. And the most shocking thing about all this is that Don Henley's still alive. I don't know. 
You want to get into the strange capper and and who it is I got to go to for the strange capper of the uh, entire news show here? It is uh, it is a funny credit to have to give, but I'm I'm looking to go for it because it is bizarre and we do live in a bizarre world. I think what I'll do though is take a quick break here so that. I can get it all straight. Also, you guys, let's get some feedback. Let me know if you want me to take calls during every kind of show, whether it's this one or the one I'm going to do tomorrow night with Alex Harris, uh, which is going to be on the JFK assassination. Um, every week you're going to get a news show from now on, though. That's the way it's planned anyway. A news show, a call-in show, those two are guaranteed. Probably some conspiracy-related show. And then a show on a book, the latest publication of some kind. That's the way the four shows of the Ocelli Effect are going to go. But do you want phone calls during all of them? Or just the one night on Fridays? Let me know. Aaron Franz is going to continue on with us on Fridays, and hopefully you'll continue on with us here on this Wednesday Ocelli Effect. Stick around. We'll be right back. Do you like history, real history, that you were never taught in schools? Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia. By author Mike Swanson, with new documentation never seen before. That'll open your eyes to events that led up to this. Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia, 1945 through 1961. Get your copy today at Amazon. Dot com. Why? The Vietnam War. By author Mike Swanson. Revelation through conversation. The views expressed by caller schools or anyone else who happens to get on the air at Ocelli.com do not necessarily reflect the views of Ocelli.com or Chuck Ocelli. And we are not responsible for any stupidity which might ensue. Thank you. Go ahead, caller. I'm interested in the truth about the JFA assassination. Right. Well, what do you want to know? Judy Baker's wild claim. Oswald girlfriend. She knew Ruby and Barry. Cancer weapons. Really? I imagine I could claim I have four wheels. It doesn't make me a wagon. But okay. Oswald was on the kill team and trying to prevent the murder of John Kennedy. Come on now. Has a real effort on the day of assassination broken into her claim? Go to Amazon.com. Enter Judith Baker in her own words. You'll get the results for a digital copy of a book where Walt Brown utilizes her own words and the known evidence in the case to get at, well, <laughs> a different perspective, let's say. You can get Judith Barry Baker in her own words from the author himself, signed if you request it by contacting Dr. Brown at K-I-A-S-J-F-K at AOL.com. It's a fun book and it actually dissects the many, many fantastic claims. Judith Berry Baker in her own words. Thank you for all the great information. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com and you're listening to the Ocelli Effect at Ocelli.com. Revelation through conversation. The War State by Michael Swanson explains the great national transformation that took place and put the Kennedy presidency in the context of the time and reveals never-before-published information about the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Kennedy would not have been assassinated if he had been president 200 years ago. His assassination took place in the context of the Cold War and the rise of the national security state. Before World War II, the United States was a continental republic. In the decade that followed, it became an imperial superpower. Generals such as Curtis LeMay not only wanted to invade Cuba, but knew that there were short-range missiles on the island armed with nuclear war heads that they could not destroy because they were on mobile launchers. Their invasion could have led to a third world war, and they wanted to go to war anyway. The war state by Michael Swanson reveals why and will show you what President Kennedy was up against. For more information, thewarstate.com. Ocelli.com. The Ocelli.com radio network. Get ready, get ready for the the Ocelli effect. The 
Kelly.com Radio Network. Going to Chuck O'Jelly. You are about to embark upon the great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely, man to man. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Third and final segment of this News Packed Wednesday, Ocelli Effect. And let's cap it off with a story that I initially pulled out and was going to put into the discussion tonight. And then I, I I withdrew it because it was too weird, too disturbing, and connected to nothing until I thought about it a little. And then I saw it come up in an email uh, having to do with the New Prisoners, which is that group that, you know, Graves was involved with there for a bit, Chris Graves, who was a host on this network for a little bit until he decided he hated my guts. Anyways, um, yeah, and, and uh, they do this thing called the Big Four where they have four news stories that they cover uh, on their show. And uh, he covered this one, and I was like, oh, maybe I should put it back in. I don't usually follow what other people say, but I thought about it, and I was like, why is this relevant? Well, it tells you a little something about, you know, those that say, the old people have destroyed the world, and the young people will save it. Gen X, you know, has been absentee. As landlords, we have, true. But uh, Generation Y and Generation Alpha upcoming, the Homeland uh, babies, all of them, after Homeland Security was born here in America, um, yeah, are are they going to do any better than any of us? Probably not. Anyway, uh, Six covered it on there in his big four, and I thought about it. It gives you some parallels and horrible food for thought. So let's do our best on a Wednesday to leave you with a bad taste in your mouth before you're done listening to this podcast. You've been warned. From the Daily Mail, okay? (laughs) Embattled Oklahoma High School breaks its silence after sick sick footage showed students engage in toe-licking challenge for a fundraiser. Quote, we failed to uphold dignity of our students, end quote. Yeah, not The Onion. This is the Daily Mail, okay? An Oklahoma high school has apologized for hosting a vile toe-licking challenge at a student fundraiser event. Uh, Deer Creek High School in Edmond was it, it has admitted <laughs> uh, it failed to uphold the dignity of our students, in quotes again, over the grotesque competition held February 29th. Outrageous video of ninth through 12th grade students licking other pupils' bare feet at the ticketed event called Clash of the Classes quickly went viral online. Uh, through this specific game, we failed to uphold the dignity of our students and the proud image of our community. That's in quotes. The school district said in a statement on March 1st. <laughs> Happy leap year, everybody. Sorry. Quote, we have a responsibility to protect our antlers and showcase them in a positive light. In regards to this one particular activity, we fell short, and for that we greatly apologize. (sighs) Quote, why is Oklahoma school so full of perverts, one parent raged on TikTok? I mean, come on, what in the world is this, she added talking about the fundraising event. Quote, my oldest daughter went to school here for a minute. What is this? Question mark. End quote. The event raised money for Not Your Average Joe Coffee, which employs people with intellectual, developmental, and physical disabilities. 
students had to pay to attend the assembly and freshmen uh, through seniors volunteered to participate in a series of class competitions. The school district also said it's, quote, taking steps to ensure that this foot licking contest in <laughs> in parentheses is not repeated and that all fundraising activities are carried out with the pride and respect worthy of our students, staff and community. Quote, <laughs> We strive to offer a positive experience for both our students and the charity that our annual fundraising efforts support, end quote, their statement added. The district pointed out that the fundraising week, which the event was part of, raised $152,830.38 for local charities. But beneficiary, not your average Joe Coffee, was bombarded with protesters harassing phone calls and angry reviews after accepting the donations. They call our stores and our friends with special needs usually answer the phones and they are being cussed out and called pedophiles, the store owner told the Oklahoman. The disgusting foot-licking display gained international attention after footage was sent to Fox 25. In the video, half of the participants sat down with their feet splayed out in front of them while the other half of less fortunate kids lay on the floor of the school gymnasium and licked their peers' feet. In an earlier statement released by the Deer Creek School District, it was noted that every student who participated signed up for the games they played ahead of time. No faculty or staff participated during the assembly, according to the statement. Users on X were outraged by the weird challenge, calling it child abuse, criminal abuse, and sex abuse. So this makes it okay. They signed up. What faculty members allowed it to occur? Question mark. This this is beyond reprehensible. It it criminal abuse. An X user responded to the school district statement. Quote: Such a disgusting way to use children. Every school staff member should be fired. And licenses pulled to never teach again. What in the world is wrong with people? Another outraged ex user said. The school district was, the school district also stated that all of the children participating in the challenges were paired up with corresponding grade levels for the toe licking. In the statement, the school boasted about the $152,830.38 raised for the charity before. Defending the Bizarre Challenge. Deer Creek schools have faced multiple scandals in the past, including a bus driver being arrested for possession of child porn. A baseball coach at the Deer Creek High School was let go because his players suffered second-degree burns after being forced to drag their knuckles across the turf on the field at practice last year. And then they provide you the statement from the school's response, etc. So... $150,000 $150,000 got raised at an event which I'm sure featured more than this. But if not, I guess a significant part of this uh, section of Colorado, right? Oklahoma, excuse me. A significant portion of this Section of of Oklahoma, not Colorado. Why am I? Oh, I know why. I have another story on Colorado, but I'm not even going to go there. Forget it. Um, Oklahoma high school students. I I guess um, one wonders who thought it up. Nobody asked that in that whole story, by the way. Who who came up with this idea? How do you get $150,000 out of stuff like this? And the, the, the poor developmentally challenged people at the coffee place, I mean, come on. It's not their fault, whatever the hell went on. Anyway, I guess um, a lot of people got foot fetishes in Oklahoma, I suppose. Uh, I'm thinking. Must be. Otherwise, how do you pull something like this off? Is this not bizarre? Um, Look, worse things in the world could happen than, you know, some kids licking other kids' feet. But weird that it happens in the public school, definitely. Kind of interesting that that fell through the cracks. Or maybe slipped through their toes. 
Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. I'm thinking that this is emblematic. This is the simile, the facsimile of what could have been and what's wrong with America right there. Um, and the school's defense, hey, look, none of the teachers participated. At least it wasn't the teachers touching the kids. It was kids touching kids, and we matched them up with the, you know, somehow they, they also defended by saying we matched them up with their appropriate age groups. So 14 to 18-year-olds were at least, you know, appropriately matched. Yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. And I bet you didn't expect that story. And, of course, uh, I want to thank Six for over at the New Prisoners for giving me that extra bit of encouragement to bring up that story. The close out this Wednesday news blast. To remind you that, uh, indeed, most of the world is insane. And what is the crazy man in the insane world? Or is it a sane man in a crazy world? Or is it an insane man in a crazy world? I don't know. Because I'm just the blind guy behind the mic. No matter who you are, where you are, when you are, I want you to remember that I am merely Ocelli and all of you are indeed the effect. In Denial, The Secret Wars with Airstrikes and Tanks by Larry Hancock. Secret Wars became a staple of U.S. covert operations and are still happening today. Larry Hancock's book, In Denial, rips the cover off many of them. Using new files, it exposes things about the Bay of Pigs that no one has ever written about before. It shows why it really failed and why the United States did not learn from it. It also shows why other countries today are doing secret operations with more success. This is the book that puts what some want to deny into the light. In Denial, Secret Wars with Airstrikes and Tanks. Larry Hancock. For more information, go to Larry-Hancock.com. Pick up your copy of In Denial at Amazon.com in digital or physical form. Do you like history, real history, that you were never taught in schools? Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia by author Mike Swanson with new documentation never seen before that will open your eyes to events that led up to this. Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia, 1945 through 1961. Get your copy today at Amazon. Dot com. Why? The Vietnam War by author Mike Swanson. Okay, as a quick uh, audio bonus at the end of this one, let's take a listen to the probable president in 2025 here in this place we used to call America. Get that war settled. It's a bad war. And Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear word today. You heard that, nuclear. He's starting to talk nuclear weapons today. Yep. That comment came, uh, yeah, Obama is so afraid of Putin. That came on March 2nd, by the way. That's uh, Trump at a rally on March 2nd, confusing Joe Biden with Obama. Saying that Putin is bringing up the nuclear question just today. Hmm. Nuclear, nuclear holocaust. holocaust. You, know you know what uranium is, right? Just think called nuclear weapons and other things, we like lots of... Problem. You know what uranium is, right? Bad things. Things are done with uranium, including some bad things. Nuclear holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? I've been briefed. Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? Just think called nuclear weapons and other things, like lots of... You know what uranium is, right? Bad things. Things are done with uranium, including some bad things. Nuclear Holocaust. The War State by Michael Swanson explains the great national transformation that took place and put the Kennedy presidency in the context of the times and reveals never-before-published information about the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Kennedy would not have been assassinated if he had been president 200 years ago. 
His assassination took place in the context of the Cold War and the rise of the national security state. Before World War II, the United States was a continental republic. In the decade that followed, it became an imperial superpower. Generals such as Curtis LeMay not only wanted to invade Cuba, but knew that there were short-range missiles on the island armed with nuclear warheads that they could not destroy because they were on mobile launchers. Their invasion could have led to a third world war, and they wanted to go to war anyway. The War State by Michael Swanson reveals why and will show you what President Kennedy was up against. For more information, thewarstate.com. 